Hello viewers, as you know, the entire world runs on Excel spreadsheets and they all expect us as C-sharp developers to somehow read those in and manipulate them. But as C-sharp developers, we know that there are no built-in libraries for handling these files. There's third-party libraries that we could use, but they come with limitations or licensing issues and who needs that hassle. So today, I'm gonna to show you a great solution using python.net. We can leverage the data manipulation capabilities of Python libraries like Pandas to seamlessly integrate Python into our C-sharp projects. Let me show you how this works real quick in this demo. We upload this file. It's just a bunch of um, household transactions that ChatGPT generated for me. Just real quick for reference, here's the uh, spreadsheet. You can see it has July, June. May information. All right, back to the video. And what I want to do, even though there's three months worth of information, I want this application to just parse out the ones for July. So you can see just the ones for July. We did that by reading the file in, but then handing it off to pandas, which is great at reading Excel and manipulating it. So let me show you how I did that. This is the GitHub page for PythonNet. PythonNet's the package we're going to use to integrate C-sharp and Python. If we drill in, we can see the documentation. And I had some problems here. Um, it's not super clear, and that's why I'm making this video. So I can make it clear to you. You must set this property or the environmental variable Set it to what, you say? Set it to the Python DLL. <laughs> Where's that, you say? Yes, exactly. Where is that? I'll show you. Um, another good one is that you import Python modules using this pi import and then the name of the module, which seems super easy unless you try to do it and it says that module doesn't exist, like when I tried to import pandas. So once again, I will show you how to get around that. Here's the solution, and I promised to go through this code um, from top to bottom and explain it, but I wanted to point out the first thing, the Python DLL. So before you do the Python engine initialize, you have to tell this um, NuGet package, this Python net, where the DLL that makes Python happen, where it's located. Um, you can see here that I have that. It's a setting in my app settings.json and once again I will explain that in a second but let me just show you where I found it on my PC. So here I am in File Explorer and I'm going to show you where I found the Python DLL. I don't know maybe when you install it it'll be simple and put it in a Python directory off the C drive but for me I had to go to me Tom Lynch and then I had to go to app data local programs program somewhere python python 312 and then here here you can see the python 312 dll so what did i do with that information well i'll show you once i found the path i took that path information and put it into my app settings.json configuration file let me show you that here I am in my app settings JSON and added this key value pair. So here you can see that I took that path to the Python DLL, including that DLL in the path, and gave it the name Python DLL because I'm not particularly clever. And then, um, like a good programmer, I set this up to do some dependency injection. So just running through that real quick, although you probably know about dependency injection, but if you don't, watch my other video on that. And um, I created this, you know, model that held these two values. Oh, speaking of two values. So a package directory, remember I said that on top of defining where the DLL is, you have to tell it where your packages are and where would the pandas package be because that's not something you download. So keep that one in mind uh, for future. But anyway, we're talking about the Python DLL. So I created this model and then use the I options interface with the Python setting model um, to inject this value from the config file into this private um, variable, Python settings, and then I used it right here. Remember it said 
the runtime Python DLL has to be has to have a value. Well, here it is. So I got the value, and then I put it here. I guess that could have been one. Could have been one statement, but whatever. Um, read the value in, then assigned it, and then I initialized. It's really important. Nothing's going to work unless you do that step. So how can we find the pandas package or any package that doesn't come, you know, built into Python? Well, what you have to do in this situation is you have to set up a virtual environment and load the packages you want to load. So you can see here in my uh, command prompt that I set up the virtual environment, called it Python Net, activated it, and then I installed pandas and it do to do install pandas. Then I had to install this package because this is the one that allows you to work with um, Excel spreadsheets in Python. And then I installed that. And then I did some nonsense and basically by um, installing both those packages, it gave me a folder on my hard drive that I could um, access those packages. Here, let me show you that are on my local hard drive and you can see that I am in the temp folder and under that's the Python net that's the one that was created when we set up the virtual environment and then I loaded the um, pandas and that Excel package so you can see under site packages um, there is pandas and there is the Excel package so that's the magic there. You have to set up a virtual environment, install the packages you want, and then set um, a path to that in your application. Let's go back to the application and, and see that again. So once again, looking at the code, we, can, we uh, see that we added the path to where our packages are, to the sys.path, so Python would know where to look. And then we imported them, imported that package, um, and the package directory is defined in the app settings.json. Remember, temp pythonet, just like we saw in the file explorer. And just to beat a dead horse, we added that to our Python settings class that we used when we did our dependency injection right at the beginning. Right at the beginning, right here, when we injected this class and got the Python settings. So those are the two key um, paths that you need. One to the Python DLL and one to where your packages are going to be. We passed in this memory stream. That's a .NET memory stream and Python doesn't quite know what to do with it. So we're converting that into a byte IO object, something that Python does understand. Uh, we do that here, then we pass it in. And pandas, this is the whole point of this exercise. C Sharp's not so good at reading Excel files. But pandas can do it super easy. And once you read it, you can do just about anything to the data. So here, we go through every row in that data frame, look for July, and then if we see July, then we write out the values into our um, data table. Oh, this is another important part. So currently, as of this video, Python Net uses a binary formatter, and um, Microsoft has made that obsolete because it's a security risk. So in order to shut down properly without errors, I've had to add all this nonsense. I mean, I'm not proud of that, but that's what you got to do to make it work until the Python net folks fix that binary formatter issue. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, that was amazing, Tom. But you did all this locally. You have all these files locally. I'm not going to run my web application locally. I'm going to put it up on the cloud. So how do we do this but do it in Azure? That's easy. There's just a couple things we need to do. Thank you.